Thank you for meeting with me today, Mr. Stewart. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. How long have you been affiliated with the YMCA of Southwestern Indiana? Well, I was a student at Bossy High School back in 1995, and I got my first job at the Y uh, working part-time, uh, helping run community outreach programs. And uh, after that, I, you know, I, I worked part-time at the Y pretty much every uh, year from 1995 uh, through my graduation from Indiana University in 1999. And then I actually returned to the Y in a professional capacity in, in 2000. So I have literally worked some part of every year at the YMCA since 1995 uh, all the way up until now. So as Chief Executive of the YMCA of Southwestern Indiana, what are some of your responsibilities? You know, primarily as the CEO, you know, my number one responsibility is to protect the mission of the YMCA. Uh, you know, we, we have an organization that served this community for over 150 years. There's tons of great history, tons of great volunteers, tons of great leaders that have facilitated the work that we've done in the community. And so I really see, you know, one of my top responsibilities as protecting that mission, to make sure the things that we do as an organization align with the mission that we have and that it aligns with our vision, aligns with our values, that uh, there's a level to which people who engage with the YMCA know what to expect when they connect with the Y. I think beyond that, it's working with our volunteers to develop strategy, to make sure that we're responding to the challenges that are facing our communities today and to work with our staff to make sure we're carrying out the vision uh, and the strategies that the volunteers believe are most important. The Y is a volunteer-founded and volunteer-led organization and so you've got that great opportunity to work with volunteers to, to sort of think about the bigger picture and then connect with staff to really think about how we bring that, that vision to life. And uh, my job as CEO is to keep those two things working together and at the same time make sure we protect the, uh, the mission and the long-term viability of, of our organization. What's the best and worst part of being a CEO? There are a lot of great parts of, of being a YMCA CEO. Probably you know, one or two that I'll say are, are the best is A, getting to work with the community. Uh, much of my job happens outside of the doors of the Y. And so I connect with volunteers every day. I connect with community leaders every day. We get to talk about the challenges that are facing our community and, and work together on strategies to, to, to do something about those things and make a difference. And then I think that the second part that I really enjoy is, is knowing that the work that I do every day, although it may seem tedious at times, is building a bigger vision in our community to, to do something different that, that makes a real difference in the lives of young people. So you know, that sense of, of long-term impact of the work is really important. I think on the other side of that, you know, what's hard um, is because we have such a, a, a vision-oriented organization, because we have so many staff and volunteers that see needs in the community and we want to do something about them to you know, help young people do better in school, to help adults re remain active and independent for as long as they can, that sometimes that challenge between mission and money and that it's just hard to fund all the things that, that we know we can do to make a difference and having to look at those uh, opportunities and at times uh, pass on things where I know we could do a good job, I know we'd make a big difference because we just don't have the resources to do that, I think, you know, is the hardest, hardest thing that I sometimes have to deal with. So going into the Denny game and the downtown YMCA, how does it make you feel to see people inside having a great time? You know, the, when I was a kid, I grew up at the Y. And so, you know, we're here in the downtown YMCA now. You know, this building is a building that I spent many of an hour in as a kid. And so there's a level to which when I, when I walk in one of our facilities and I see, you know, a dad playing basketball with his son, I think about me and my dad play basketball together in the Y. Or I see, a, you know, a mom, you know, taking her kid in, into the Y to learn how to swim. I just think about the experiences that I had as a kid. And, you know, it seems like anymore families are so fragmented. There's so many things that are going on. People are so busy that there's not as much as that family togetherness as, you know, existed when I was a child. And so being able to, to know that as a Y, we're playing a role in helping maintain that for many families, and even for some families, uh, helping bring that back when, when it existed a long time ago, but maybe doesn't exist as much now, uh, makes me feel really good about, about the mission and, and vision for our organization. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about your family? Yes, I am uh, very fortunate. I've got, I got three wonderful uh, women in my life. My, my wife I've been married to for now 13 years. Uh, we have two daughters. I've got a 10-year-old and a 5-year-old, and uh, the thing I love about the YMCA is they're here just about as much as I am. Uh, this is a place that our family's connected to. I met my wife right here at the YMCA, and um, you know, and, and just about every day she's either at one of our facilities, being a part of our group exercise classes, or bringing our kids to a program. Tomorrow morning, I got one kid that has a basketball game at nine, and the other one has a basketball game at 10, uh, and so we'll be in the Y for a couple of hours tomorrow. We do swim lessons. We do other programs. Uh, my daughter went to Camp Carson this summer, which is our resident camp uh, up in Princeton and enjoyed a week-long 
residential experience there and you know had a great time there and so you know we certainly uh, use the YMCA as members as program participants as well as uh, as this being a place that I, I get to spend my profession what plans are there for the YMCA in the future so there are a lot of great things that are going on at our YMCA right now uh, just this past year we launched a four million dollar capital campaign to fund some expansions and renovations at our camp in Princeton and so we've replaced all of the cabins that were originally uh, a part of the camp when it was founded in 1941 and we're in the process of doing a number of projects that are going to really build that facility and allow it to be successful for the next 75 years and so we're about two million dollars uh, in commitments to that four million dollar goal and my hope is that in the next 12 to 18 months we'll, we'll reach that goal and then from a programmatic perspective uh, again there are tons of great things happening probably the the one or two that i'm most excited about is we run a program called the Summer Learning Loss Prevention Program. It's a program designed to, to help uh, kids that are generally from low-income families and that are not progressing at a proper rate in their reading levels in school. And the history shows that kids from low-income families tend to regress uh, educationally in reading levels during the summer vacation. And so we've been operating a program now for two summers that'll serve 32 kids within uh, a school and for six weeks, they'll be involved in an intensive reading program. Mm -hmm. Then after that, they'll spend the afternoon in, in enrichment activities. And so it goes from 8.30 to 4.30 for six straight weeks during the summer. And in every situation, every kid we've served has at a minimum maintained their reading level during a time when uh, statistically they would normally lose two to three months. And on the high end, we've had one student who gained an entire great level of reading in just six weeks. And so this coming summer, we're going to expand that program from one site that serves up to 32 kids to three sites that will serve up to 96 kids uh, between Vandenberg and Warwick County. So we're thrilled about that. It'll be a great initiative and, and we're going to help some kids do better in school. And the other thing I'll tell you that I'm, I'm really excited about, about is uh, a new initiative we started just recently called the Rock Steady Program, mm -hmm. which uh, serves Parkinson's patients and involves them in, in a boxing program to just help sort of build mobility and build uh, their muscle mass and strength. Uh, it's something we've been doing for a few months, but it's off to a wonderful start. And it's just great to see a population that may not normally, normally be able to connect uh, into our work, be able to come and be a part of our YMCA. Thank you for meeting with me today, Mr. Stewart. Thank you. Reporting for Boston's EBSC Community Link from the Downtown YMCA, I'm Kelviana Johnson.